In a previous video on the disassembly of this motorcycle, it was discovered that even in the reserver on position, uh, this was no longer liquid tight and gasoline was still being fed into the carburetors. So in this video, we're going to talk about the repair of this fuel shutoff valve. It could be argued that if you're just going to replace the gasket under here, this could be done on the bike. I can't imagine why you'd want to work on this on the bike. But regardless of how you're going to work on this, the first thing you're going to have to do is drain the tank. And connect that hose to a gas can and start draining this. I will now uh, switch it up to reserve and get this underway. You can hear it starting now. The next thing is working on the tank or off the tank. If, if you were just replacing the gasket and, and removing it from the front, that's one thing. But you'd actually want to remove the whole entire valve too, especially if you're flushing the whole unit, which would be optimal. Once it's removed from the bike, you would really want to service the whole thing. The Phillips screwdriver will take this right off. There are several benefits to this, uh, the first of which is the ability to flush the tank with this removed. The other benefit is the fuel filters for the regular and reserve setting are actually on this device. Most people don't know that. Want to ensure we have a fitted screwdriver for the next task as we open this portion up. There we go. You don't want to break any of these parts, these are fragile. See what we find. Get time to clean the chrome too during this repair. There's a uh, a warble washer in here too. I could already see that there is uh, damage to the um, rubber seal right here and this was the the cause of failure right so this is why it started leaking it was coming through here and and out the other side so this is going to have to be replaced in this condition in the off position we could see the slot little smiley face here in the off position there would always be fuel trickling from the primary on position into here and out there would never be a way for it to be fully off until the gas got so low that you hit reserve. At that point, it would stop flowing. So reserve would work and on would always be on. I went on to eBay and found this seal kit for a very good price. So I'm just going to order it and have it arrive and then we're going to swap it out. The new kit has arrived, 2182727. And with that, we could replace uh, uh, a number of things actually that have come with the kit. And I'm going to use many of these items. The first thing I want to do, though, is remove the old seals from this unit. And first we have uh, the one inside here. Very gently take that out. I don't want to scratch the, the surface of the metal, right? See, it came out. And there's a lot of corrosion under there, which means that a cleaning is definitely in order. And the seal is dried out. We'll take a look at the seal here. This is what we're working with. It's dried out. It's 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 rotten, right? That's fine. Ready to go. And around here is another seal. I'll pull that one out too. Oh, that's gone on the floor. And finally, there's the seal that makes its way uh, to the gas tank. I'm going to attempt to take this one out now. There it goes. This one this one's dried out as well seen better days lift this one off okay all the seals removed I can start the cleaning process let that sit for a bit I'll get some q-tips get underway What's left is the oxide, so uh, aluminum corrosion under there after years. So what I'm just going to do, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to uh, lubricate this new seal and I'm going to put it in. It should be fine. Both sides, by the way. You can spray a little in there. Why not? 
and just place it right in. Done. Next is the O-ring. I will place into that detent down there. And now the O-ring is in place. So now I'm going to disassemble the actual valve just for a moment here. And I'm going to, I'm going to polish this up while it's disassembled just for a minute. Give this side a quick cleaning as well and made sure that it was free of any burrs or debris. And now I'm going to put this back on. It's just going to seat in there just like that. The wobble washer will sit in the middle. This is going to go over. And then I'm going to put my screws back in. Just start them, that's all. Don't tighten one down. Because they're going to be tightened progressively. Make sure everything looks straight. Yep. Keeping it even, little on this side, little on that side, little on this side. Went this all the way down. Get a little tighten. And there it is. Check the turning, it feels nice and smooth. And there you go, it's done. The last piece will be this gasket right here, the seal. A little bit of, little bit of rem oil on there. That's what I do. And just place it down in position. There's some, some detents in here in the aluminum. There are four of them that hold it into place. And they're at the far edges here on the sides. There you go. This piece is now done. This brings us to the bottom of the tank, but we will now put the shutoff valve back on. First, we'll clean the uh, mating surface. I have some, some spray cleaner here, some detergent. Reinsert the valve. Get each side just snug. And then give each side a tighten. That's it, we're done. The best way to test this would be to disconnect this line and then put a length of hose somewhere, perhaps to a gasoline tank in case there is an issue. Fill the tank with gas very slowly, observing that there's no fuel leak. If fuel starts leaking out in the off position, then stop filling it, right? But as long as fuel is not leaking, okay, very well. And then when the tank is filled, maybe about a quarter tank is all you need to test it. Turn it to reserve and fuel should flow. Turn it to off and the fuel should stop flowing. And then turn it to on and fuel should flow. And then turn it to off and fuel should stop flowing. And when you see that that happens, you know the job was successful. You could reconnect the main fuel line and you're done. So I hope you found the repair of this V-Star 1100 fuel shutoff valve useful, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.